Hey everybody, welcome and thanks for coming out to our 3 p.m. seminar. We're, we're very excited about this. We have Soma from Soma Seeds and uh, he's going to be talking about the art of cannabis and also making a, uh, a hash smoothie with, what was it, wild berries? Hot, a hot chocolate hash super fruit smoothie. So you, you got to stick around for this demonstration. Please give it up for Soma. Everybody having a good time? You know, with this five gram limit, it's a little bit hard, but I'm still having a good time. You know, I can't really show off my, my box of buds like I usually do, and that's kind of not so nice, but I'm still having a good time, and I'm still staying stone, and I hope all you are staying stone. You know, there's this American Indian tradition that when somebody's speaking, they hold it a talking stick and then when they're finished speaking they pass it to the next person that's going to talk and everybody else kind of listens and this is a great place to talk because it's not connected to the show so you can actually hear whatever I'm going to say really easy this talking stick I'm using here this I grew with my partner I grew this talking stick on my roof this year from a female seed. And it made the most beautiful, so malicious plant. And then I figured I'd take the stalk and use it as a talking stick for speaking today. You know, now my dreads are hitting the floor. But there was a time when I had really short hair and no beard. And I was working at IBM Madison Avenue and 57th Street. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. I really didn't, you know. And this guy came in there and he said, did you ever smoke marijuana? And I said, no. He said, would you like to? And I said, yeah. So the next day he brought me 15 rolled joints for $5, 1967. And I took one of those joints after I got off work and I went to the East River Bridge and there was kind of nobody there and I lit that joint up and by the time I finished that joint I think my sideburns started growing but through the next weeks my hair started going over my ears my sideburns definitely started growing and I started wearing yellow shirts with my three-piece suit and before you knew it, they call me in the office and they go, look, we got a white shirt policy. You got to get a haircut and you got to cut those sideburns. And I said, I quit. And this is my second set of dreadlocks. I got my first set cut off when I went to jail in Florida. They cut my dreadlocks off in 1983. I started growing these in 1985. And in two days, they'll be 27 years old. But I'm a good example of how somebody can start out with such short hair, no beard, and the straightest way of thinking. And I ended up like this. That, that's just one thing. But, you know, when, when, I, when I saw my first cannabis plant, I thought it was so beautiful the way it was growing, the way it moved in the wind, that just looking at the plant itself was a beautiful thing for me. Sometimes when I go into a grow room or I go out on my roof and look at my outdoor plants, I can just stand there and forget time and just look at the plants living and get really happy. And the first time I ever grew weed was in Vermont real cold climate. I didn't really know what I was doing so much. And when I had these plants going, I had a goat. And one day the goat went over to the plant and started chomping this plant down so fast. I couldn't believe a goat could eat a plant that fast. And so I found out that goats like cannabis too. And I found out that cows like cannabis. I got 13 cats 
All of my cats, they all eat cannabis. When I put cannabis out on my roof and I let the cats out there, they chomp all, I don't have to worry about tri trimming the bottom of my plant. The cats do it. The cats do it. And then, believe it or not, I mean, the cats did it to this, and I came up with the most beautiful plants, though. I mean, I didn't have much on the very bottom, but on the top, boy, I had a lot. And I found that, that deers eat it, squirrels eat it, dogs eat it, like a lot of things like cannabis. Moss, there's, this year I had these moss on my outdoor plants. The moss come along, they lay their eggs in the tops, the little caterpillars hatch and they make a web around the top of the leaves and they make like a little tent inside the cannabis bud and it's like insulated from the cold and they survive like that for a while and so even moss really like cannabis man so many things like it and you know it's like this is my 18th cannabis cup the reason i i live in holland in the Netherlands is because in 1994 I came to my first cannabis cup it was the seventh one and I thought it was such a beautiful place for freedom I thought wow man I really found cannabis freedom I finally found it and within the next year I moved here and since I've been here I've had two grandchildren born here and I'm working on a new child right now with my partner. So this is a really magical, magical place, the Netherlands, even with all of its restrictions and all of its suppression that we see here at this Cannabis Cup this year, it's still very chizelic. And, you know, cannabis, Cannabis is a subject that can be gone into so deeply. When I first came to my first cannabis cup and I saw the freedom that existed here in the coffee shops and in the grow shops and in the seed companies, it made me start crying. I started crying those tears of joy, not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. You know, it's not too many tears, but it's like when you feel that feeling go through your body, it's a real rush because I said to myself, I finally found this oasis I've been searching for for decades. And now I've been here 17 years and I've watched this place develop and I've watched places like Colorado develop, places like California develop, places like Washington develop, places like Uruguay develop, places like Spain develop. I mean, right now, if you go to Barcelona, there's these cannabis social clubs that once you become a member, you're allowed to go in there and you're allowed to purchase cannabis, you're allowed to purchase hash, you're allowed to purchase edibles, and you're in a really comfortable environment. And some of these cannabis social clubs even have a giant grow room that they're growing some of your medicine in there too. And so things are really changing around the world. And cannabis has a lot to do with why the world is changing. Because we see things like what's happening in Gaza today, this Israeli invasion of Gaza, this horrible slaughter of human beings, mothers and children and stuff. It's like, there are many things happening on this planet all at the same time. Right as I sit here speaking about this, people are getting killed in Palestine. So there's a lot of different vibrations on the planet at the very same time. I'm very thankful that all of us are here in this peaceful environment. Maybe we got this five gram limit, but there aren't bombs falling on us right now. Um, I started my seed bank in 1990. I started in America underground. And then in 1995, I brought it over here. 
And since starting that seed bank in 1995, my seeds have gone all over the world. The other day, somebody came to my booth from Tahiti, and he said, Soma, your New York City diesel is the most fami famous, well-liked strain in Tahiti. And I go, oh, wow, man, you even made it to Tahiti. You know, and, and so these days, people call me from Brazil, from Japan, from Iceland, from Lebanon, from Turkey, from Spain, from France, from Switzerland, from so many different places in the world telling me, thank you, Soma. And I found that spreading seeds in the world is, is one of the very best things that any human being can do because basically when you think about seeds if you throw a bunch of cannabis seeds on the ground nothing's going to happen seeds need to go in the darkness of underneath the ground be in that beautiful state of privacy where the outside world isn't there yet. And when they're underground in that state, they gather strength. They gather energy. And as they break through that soil, they get ready to face the world, the light, the wind, the storms, the rain. And then they start to do their thing. But you know, all the thoughts that us humans think all the time, those thoughts are like seeds. Every single thought that we think, it's like a seed that we plant. And if we fertilize those thoughts, they grow. If we don't give them enough juice, they die. And you know, each of us humans is like a seed. We start out in this womb of our mothers, in this totally dark place, total privacy, gathering strength, gathering energy, so that when we come out, we can face the light, and face the storms, and face the wind, and face the world, and be successful be successful in working with all these challenges us humans have to work with these days on planet Earth, being successful with fixing stuff. A lot of stuff needs to get fixed these days, and if we don't fix it, who's gonna fix it? I mean, we're really the people we're waiting for is us. We gotta fix this stuff. You know, I got, I got a few sayings. Like, I got five good sayings that I always tell to people that are asking me grow advice. And I think if you remember these five things, you can come out with a really successful garden. One of them is, when it looks like it's ready, wait a week. I mean, one of the worst things is people picking a plant before it's ready. It's like picking a green tomato or picking a green banana. It doesn't, it's not there yet, you know what I mean? So it's like a lot of people look at their plants and they go, I'm gonna pick this. And I always tell them, wait a week, wait a week. W however you can do it, just wait a week. It'll all be better. And it's really true. I always tell people, don't look at your wallet, look at the plants. Like, don't look at your wallet and go, oh my God, man, I gotta pay so many bills, I gotta harvest this stuff. That's no good. Look at the plant and wait for the plant to be ripe. Ripe is a really good word. It means really ready, you know? Don't look at your calendar either and go, oh man, I just hit 10 weeks, I better cut. No, 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 no. Don't look at the calendar, don't count the weeks. No matter what it says on the seed package, no matter what advice you got, don't look at the calendar. Look at the plant. Be in touch with the plant and know if the plant is ripe. 
Look at the moon. If you want to look at something, look at the moon. Like follow that moon and watch when the moon is full and wait till a week after or even two weeks after the moon is full, right at the end before it starts the new moon. Pick it then and watch how much better it is than if you pick it before the full moon or if you pick it right on the full moon. You got to wait till a little bit after the full moon and then see if you see a difference. And most important, stay in your heart. When you're working with cannabis plants, and for that matter, when you're working with human life and all its challenges, stay in your heart. Kindness is one of the most powerful things in the world. Try and apply it every place you can because kindness works. Meanness, hateful words, hateful thoughts, hateful actions. Don't do shit, really. Kindness does everything. The only thing keeping this all together is love. Love is the glue that keeps all this together, everything that we're all doing all the time. It would all fall apart without that glue of love. You know, in 2005, I had open heart surgery. And I came this close to death. And they put me on these heavy-duty medications, six different ones, blood thinners, um, cl cholesterol lowers. Um, man, all these, every one was a white pill. And I was taking this many white pills, that many white pills, this many white pills. And then after about three months, I did a, a mushroom tea, psilocybin mushroom tea. And while I was on the tea, on the medication, my inner self, my inner guide kind of told me, you don't need to keep taking that medicine. So I dropped it. I told my doctor I was doing it. And I only started using high-grade organic cannabis and high-grade hash as my medicine. And I'm so healthy these days that I have to pinch myself to remember that I had open-heart surgery because when I go to the hospital for my yearly checkup, Nobody else looks like me. They're all like white looking, pale, they're almost falling off their chair, they're breathing hard. And, and I go, holy shit, man. Then I go in to see my cardiologist. He does the whole checkup, the EKG, blood pressure, you know, every, all these heavy duty machines he checks me out with. He takes a sonar, checks out the heart valve, see how it's beating and everything. And then he, then he, he writes down on a piece of paper that cannabis is my only medicine and my health is superb. So it works, it really works. And not just for recovering from open heart surgery, it works for thousands of different ail ailments, thousands. And my pants, 100% cannabis. In fact, my friend that made these pants, she's here right now and boy, she makes great pants. And it, it's like cannabis makes the best paper my friend Adam from TH Seeds told me that in Colorado, they're starting to collect all the stalks and branches, and they're starting to make Colorado organic hemp paper. Pretty soon, you'll see hemp toilet paper. You'll see hemp paper towels, hemp computer paper. It's like, it's, instead of cutting down all these trees, We'll start making paper in, like the old days out of a renewable plant like hemp. We can let all the trees grow for hundreds of years, making oxygen, giving us nice shade, giving us beautiful landscapes, and we can just start making all this paper stuff, like paper toilet paper and paper towels, out of hemp. It's going to happen. It's just that places like Colorado have to happen. Places like Washington happen have to happen. Places like Uruguay have to happen. I'm blown away that I've been here 17 years. Cannabis has been happening here for 30 years and the Dutch government never thought of, hey, why don't we start a, a cannabis paper towel company? Why don't we start a cannabis toilet paper company? You know how much of that they'd sell? You know how many trees they'd save? You know how much less bleach would have to be used to make this stuff because you can make all that paper with hydrogen peroxide. You don't need to bleach. Um, you know, I've been watching Barcelona with these cannabis social clubs. 
Now, you look at Spain. The economy in Spain is floundering. In fact, the whole Euro economy is floundering. Every day I wake up and I can still use the Euros to buy something, I'm happy because I can't believe they're still working, actually. I really can't believe the Euro's still working. And I think most of the European governments, they can't believe the Euro's still working. And the banks, they're glad that the Euro's still working, but how much longer it's, it still works, I don't know. But I tell you, cannabis has been an economic lifesaver for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. In fact, there would be no economics without cannabis because all the old ships that carried the spices from Indonesia back to Holland and carried the, 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 the cannons and, and all the stuff that they used to carry on the ships in the old days, there was 60 tons of cannabis that it would take to make one ship intact because all the sails were made out of cannabis, all the rope was made out of cannabis. Every bit of glue that glued the wood together was called oakum, O-A-K-U-M. That was a, like cannabis epoxy, a natural cannabis epoxy that didn't get hurt by the salt water. So all those ships, were all, all the wood was glued together with cannabis. And none of that trade, in fact, we wouldn't have interstate commerce like we do these days if it hadn't been for those cannabis-made ships back then. So cannabis has always been there to help our economy. It's there now. And when you look at Barcelona, a place like Barcelona, where the economy is on the rocks everywhere, in Barcelona, in the cannabis social clubs, it's booming. The insurance company makes, makes money on the social club. The landlord makes money on the social club. The painters that come in and paint the place, they make money. The electricians, um, the growers, the, I mean, it, it opens up so many jobs immediately when one of those places opens up that all these people that had no work, half of them all of a sudden get jobs because cannabis is good for economic conditions, always has been, always will be, and it will, you know, I look at this, I look at this, these roots. I grew this plant on my roof this, this summer. And when I look at these roots, it kind of looks like a bunch of electric wires all messed together, you know? And you know what? They are like electric wires. Cannabis plants are electric. We, we live in an electric universe and everything in this universe is electric. And cannabis, has so much energy that even this dead stock, I can feel amazing energy in it. And the buds that this stock made, I can still remember what they're like. You know, they're, they're really good. Um, I've been looking at pictures on the internet of police in Colorado posing with people with their plants and them throwing all these court cases out and letting all these people out of jail that had cannabis charges. Now, why can't that catch on and keep spreading like a wildfire all around the world and until this victimless crime of growing cannabis and smoking cannabis can be dropped? You know, one of my favorite things about cannabis is sharing, is the way when people use cannabis, they like to share it with their friends. Like when you roll a joint, it's almost, for me, it's always more fun when I smoke a joint with one of my friends than if I smoke it all by myself. Because that sharing part, I love that sharing part of it. It, it makes me feel so good, it makes me feel close. And, you know, it's like, we all need roots. I mean, as humans, we need to have roots. We need to have roots in good places so that when we develop, when we grow, we grow up in a healthy way. But us humans have roots. You can't see them, they're kind of invisible, but you can feel them. You can feel if you don't have them, and you can feel if you have them. If you don't have them, you're kind of like a leaf at the mercy of the wind. 
And if you got some roots, then you get some stability. And you get some time staying someplace so that your roots can grow healthy. But we don't, as humans, just have roots. We got wings, too. Because all of us humans are actually angels in physical bodies with totally amnesia. Yeah, one of my strains is the amnesia. But we humans got amnesia about the fact that we're all angels. We're all angelic beings in physical bodies dealing with the mystery school of duality, which is quite the journey. One thing I found that's good for a journey is um, hash smoothies. Now, I don't know if you ever heard of this book from 1857, The Hashish Eater. It's this book from 1857 that this guy wrote who did a lot of experimentation with consuming hash. And um, I just got to put this microphone down for a second. So I'm taking some beautiful spring water because I'm going to make this. Oh, um, uh, Camila, is Camila around? Jesse, Camila? Okay, can I get that blender? Um, I'm going to make a hot chocolate superfood hash smoothie. And I'll have tiny little tastes. Not enough to feel, unfortunately, because there's just too many people, but tiny little taste for as long as it lasts, you know, that you can take a, a taste of. So the first thing I'm going to do is boil some water so I can make some tea. Now right here, I have two gram. hey, only two grams. If there's any police undercover agents in the audience, I only have two grams of hash here. Three grams under the limit. And I'm going to take that two grams of hash and make this whole smoothie with this two grams. So it's going to be very, very minute amounts of hash that's in here. This is this really nice um, yogi tea called Choco. It's like a chocolate tea. It's really nice. So I'm putting some... Um, Organic raw cashews in here. This is this raw organic cacao powder from Peru. This stuff is slamming, man. I mean, like David Wolf, one of my friends, he was telling me that there's more vitamin C in, in raw cacao than there is in oranges. And so if you do stuff like raw cacao every day, it makes you feel good. This is this raw, organic almond butter. This is this stuff called Manuka honey. This is the most healing honey in the world. Only comes from New Zealand. But it's really slamming. How about a spoon? Anybody come up with a spoon? Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is some beautiful maple syrup that a brother gave me yesterday. This stuff is called Pure Synergy. It's got blue-green algae and spirulina, and it's got a hundred different superfoods in it. Really good stuff. That's organic coconut oil. It's like so good for you. You know, human brains are made out of 60% fat. The whole outside of the brain is a fat layer. 
This is maca, a root, a powdered root from Peru and Bolivia. Really good for your hormones. Let me see now. Okay. This is cacao butter with the hash. This is organic coconut water. A little bit more hot water and we'll be ready to go. Um. Now, I, I highly recommend this kind of smoothie or this kind of hot chocolate. If somebody had fibromyalgia, let's say, you drink something like this. And you don't have fibromyalgia right then for a while. It goes away. If you have insomnia and you drink something like this, you don't got insomnia no more. Um, if, you, if you got cancer and you can't get your appetite going, you drink something like this, not only do you get some nutrition, but you get your appetite going. If you got AIDS and you're wasting away and you drink something like this, you get a lot of comfort, a lot. So, here we go. I'm going to have this recipe. I'm going to I'm going to put this recipe. I'm I'm making a cannabis app for iPhones. Like a cannabis grow tip app, but it's going to have recipes. It's going to have a lot of cool stuff on it, but this very recipe right here is going to be on it and a bunch of other ones because I'm telling you, I've been finding for the last year that if you consume cannabis, if you eat it, if you, if you consume cannabis in an edible form, it has way more of a healing effect on you and you need a lot less and you can use it for specific ailments, for instance, fibromyalgia, that really benefit from eating cannabis even more than smoking it. So I, I highly recommend that all of you try it growing these plants, try getting to know them, because if you get to know cannabis, it will help you get to know yourself. And if you get to know yourself, it's one of the best things you can ever do on this planet. It's what we're all here for, 
to get to know ourselves, to get to know our real selves, who we really are, and we're all really angels. So it's up to us to change this planet into the heaven it's meant to be. We can do it. Cannabis can help us. And we got the whole internet to help us these days. So have a good time here in Amsterdam. I love you all. <laughs>